Hey, Magic fans, welcome back. This is your captain speaking here on Captain Clyde's MTG Spoilers for more Midnight Hunt action. All right, guys, so trade tables, seat backs, in a full upright position. Your captain's getting ready to take off and take you into Spoiler Town, where we get to see all the latest and greatest of the Midnight Hunt spoilers. As the spoilers have been progressing, we have noticed a theme of good to great to busted cards. So, do we have more in store for today? Let's take a look and find out. So, with that said, remember to like, subscribe, hit your notification bell, put some comments down below, help get views for the channel. I really do appreciate the support. And as always, if you want to throw some cash my way, the eBay store, you can actually buy some cards from me. Uh, as we do our box opening series, all the cards you see on the box opening series goes up for sale on eBay. And keep an eye out as I post coupons and stuff inside my links to my store on occasion. So, without further ado, let's get into it as we only have 66 cards left after we go through the spoiler list. So, starting off first, we have whatever that says. Anyway, it's the Sunrise Cavalier. So, for a red, a white, and a one. You get a human knight with trample haste and it's 3-3. Seems pretty sweet so far. Uh, when it enters, when it in, if it's either day or night, when it enters, you get day on the battlefield. Now, whenever it becomes day or night, you put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature you control. So this makes me wonder, is this really a 4-4 four, four for 3? Whenever a day becomes night or night... Be oh, okay, no. It's still a 3-3, three, three, but as soon as it flips, it's now a 4-4. Four, four. So... Yeah, this is a great uncommon. Red-White's already got some really strong colors in Boros. Yeah, I know. I said it. Boros. Anyway, get over it. Um, this is like a great card, especially for draft. Probably going to see standard play. I don't think it's going to catch, catch on in modern too much, uh, even though it is a human just because of the special ability of flipping day to night is very um, narrow compared to the rest of the stuff going on in modern. Uh, however, if there's a day or night deck that's humans, maybe Commander wants it. I guess we'll have to wait and find out. Moving right along. Next we have the Firmament Sage. So we have a blue and three creature human wizard. If it's day, if it's neither day or night, it becomes day when it enters the battlefield, yada, yada, yada. Whenever day becomes night or night becomes day, you draw a card. That is good. Wow. Um. Uh, now, obviously, it's probably going to see standard play. Four mana for a two, three is really bad. However, it might if that draw engine is good enough. Now, with that said, this is going to be phenomenal and limited. And I could even see this going into commander decks. Uh, I mean, for four mana for a two, three, if they don't kill it and you get to turn it from day to night, it's a free card draw. Like, I just, I think it's good. Um, however, uh, with it being so small, it might not be good enough in standard. Definitely not good enough in modern because you get the four mana in modern, you're already playing Jund, and that's not in these colors. So, moving right along. Next here, we have Sneak Into the Festival. So, we have a three green and three sorcery. Look at the top five cards of your library. Put up to two permanent cards with mana value five or less from among them onto the battlefield. Put the rest on the bottom of your library and a random odor. And it has a flashback for a mere nine mana. Um, I mean, I would say that this is not good. But we have seen what ultimatum cards can be phenomenal. It does basically the same thing. Uh, except it's five mana value or less, so at least you can't go in your deck and grab something completely abusive um, and put it onto the battlefield. Uh, it is roughly the same cost, but it is one color, so you don't need a three-color deck anymore. So this may change the look of what those ultimatum decks look like. Um, I don't know, but I think this in in ramp decks could be a thing. Um, I hate to say that. Uh, in In limited, I don't think it's as good. Uh, it costs too much, takes too long to get out, and what if you already draw, already drawn all your good stuff and this has nothing left to hit? Um, with that said, it can be good on the situation. Yada, yada, yada. Oh, it's got a flashback. Uh, but this is definitely going to be something that commander guys are going to love, especially if you're running a commander ramp deck. This is going to be so sweet. Um, and clearly, this is more than four mana, so it's not going into modern. So, moving right along. All right, guys. Next here we have... Jaren, Corrupted Bishop. All right, so Jaren, Corrupted Bishop. Uh, black and two for two, three. That's not bad rate already. Uh, when he enters the battlefield or another non-token human you control dies, you lose a life and create a 1-1 one, one white creature token. Um, okay. 
Uh, so target human you control gains life at the end of turn. That's pretty cool. Uh, at the beginning of your next instep, if you have exactly 13 life, you may pay 6 black. If you do transform Jaren, he transforms into Ormond, Ormondal the Corrupter, uh, which is a 6-6 six, six flying, trampling, life-linking, sacrifice another creature, draw a card. card. Um, this seems good as a mythic. Uh, I mean, especially for commander and, and definitely for limited... I don't know about standard because getting exactly 13 life on your upkeep can be really hard to do. Now, if you flip him, uh, hoorah, um, more power to you. So I'm going to have to see this in action because the only way to flip him is with 13 life. And that could be, uh, let's say, difficult. And, I mean, but with that said, if you run him in a deck that actually, you know, goes from day to night, well, actually, no. That wouldn't work with him because you have to put him in one way and then flip him. Well, I'm going to look into that. You know, if you cast him for three and it's night out, does he come in as Ormondal? Hmm. That's what normally happens. We'll have to see. Take, take a look at that. So, moving right along. Next here, we have the Benevolent Hermit, which transforms into the Benevolent Geist. So, two mana for 2-1. For blue, you sacrifice the Hermit. Counter target non-creature spell unless it's controller pays 3. Disturb of 3. So, for blue and 2, you get him out of your graveyard to make a 2-2 two -two flyer. Non-creature spells you control can't be countered. And if the guys would be dealt with, it has to go into exile. Not a terrible rare. Um, not really what I'm looking for here for blue, I don't think. Uh, but maybe it is. Um, the ability to have a creature that counters target spell. So... Uh, but at the same time, if they use removal on it, we're going to sacrifice it to counter their removal spell. It seems a little weird, but whatever. Moving right along. All right, so here we have Tolovar's Huntmaster. Wow, that's a rare. Um, two green and four, six mana, human werewolf. When he enters the battlefield, you create uh, two, two, two green wolf tokens. So you get 10 power for six mana. This is bonkers. Um, and it's day bound, so that's just disgusting. Um, if you if a ramp deck plays this on you, you're probably going to die. And then, not to mention the fact that if it flips over because it's nighttime, it becomes a werewolf, which is Tolvar's pack leader. Uh, when the pack leader enters the battlefield or attacks, uh, you create two 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 green wolf tokens, and now it's a seven seven. Uh, and for four green, another target wolf or if you control fights target creature you don't control. Th this thing is bonkers. Why is this not a mythic? I mean, I know it costs a lot of mana, but for the love of God, if you get this thing on the field, and you can't deal with it. Like, this is a limited powerhouse. Um, Commander would probably like this. Um, I really think this might be a card for standard. I mean, I know it's six mana, but if you ramp into this thing, I mean, I don't know if... This, this is right up there with Coma. This is ridiculous. Wow, that thing's good. So, moving right along. So, next here, we have a flip card, the Smoldering Egg. For a red and a colorless, you get a 0-4 defender. Whenever you cast instant sorcery spell, put a number of Ember Tower of Smoldering Egg equal to the amount of mana spent to cast a spell. Then a Smoldering Egg has seven more Ember Counters on it. Remove them and transform it. Uh, you get a 4-4 Ashmouth Dragon who has flying. And whenever you cast instant or sorcery, it deals two damage to any target. Wow, this thing's good. Um, so this is really good in a red deck. Like you can make it as a defender. Um, pop off some spells, turn it to a 4-4, where if you pop off even more spells, you're going to start capping things for two damage. Um, this looks like another great dragon for Dragon Tribal, which is already going to make it great card. Um, it's going to be great in uh, probably limited at least. Um, this I think this is very easily a standard playable card because the blue-red deck does plenty of Instance of sorceries, you can get up to seven and flip this thing over and make a serious threat out of it. Not to mention Commander Dragons, right? This thing is going to be bonkers. This might be good enough for Modern, only because there's lots of decks out there in Modern that have lots of instance of sorceries for one and two. And playing this for two is almost like investing in a flying Tarmogoyf that's going to start shocking things on a regular basis. Because it can make dead cards good. You know, they could have nothing, no cards in their hand, and you have um, two... Um, let's say Colzex, uh, uh, the discard card that has Colzex. I forget what it's called now. Uh, but anyway, um, or even um, Thoughtseize. You know, they got no cards in hand, but you're, all that stuff's dead. All that stuff's dead cards. 
You cast a discard spell, even though they have no cards in their hand, and you start shocking things, like them, or all their stuff on the board. Like, this seems powerful enough to hit every format, um, if played correctly, and if we get something good out of it. So, this seems like a good card. Moving right along. Next here, we have the Eventual Strangler, and the Strangling Grasp. So, for a black and one, you get a 2-1 human rogue. Can't block. Uh, when it dies, return to the battlefield transform under your control. Attached to target creature or planeswalker and opponent controls. Uh, it enchants the creature or planeswalker. And at the beginning of your upkeep, enchanted permanent controller sacrifices a non-land permanent or lo and loses a life. Hmm. Very interesting. Uh, it might be okay. Um, it's a decent source of removal. It is aggro. Um, if there's room in black, mono black for this, could be a good card. Uh, I think this is clearly going to be good and limited um, for the most part. Um, but all the other formats, we'll have to wait and see. Moving right along, we have the Death Bonnet Sprout. Dur, 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 dur. So for one green, you get a 1-1. One, one. At the beginning of your upkeep, you get the middle card. If there are three or more cards in your graveyard, you transform it. It transforms into this ugly thing. Which is a 3-3 three, three, that at the beginning of your upkeep, you may exile a card from your graveyard if the creature exile. If the creature is exiled this way, you put a plus one plus one counter on the Death Bonnet Hulk. So at one mana and the ability to mill, plus the fact that creatures go to your graveyard, this I think is going to be a powerhouse common that we're going to see a lot of, especially in creature decks that are green or have green bases to them. Um, it just seems really good. Limited, limited all-star, good for standard. Um, I don't know if it's going to be a commander card. Seems a little weak for commander. It doesn't really do anything combo -y wise or what have you. Uh, but if you have a fungus deck, you know, have at it. There's a fungus among us. Anyway, uh, probably not going to do anything in uh, modern. So next we have Fateful Absence. So for a white and a colorless instant, you destroy target creature or planeswalker and its controller investigates. So this is a very interesting removal card. So it will kill anything in white. But they get to spend two mana at some point and draw a card off of it. But that may be okay. I mean, we've had cards like this before. Um, they exiled, so I mean, it was a little different. But basically had this same effect. Um, you know, Path to Exile gives lands. Like, I, I think this is going to be a really powerhouse player for white decks. And I think it's going to be good in all formats. Uh, to a point. Uh, it's not going to be good in Modern, my bad. Um, this is not what White's into in Modern, uh, unless, you know, something weird happens. So, moving right along. We have the Blood Tide Collector for Black and Four. You get a 3-4 Flyer, and when it enters the battlefield, if an opponent has lost life this turn, each opponent discards a card. Um, I mean, it's good filler for Limited, but I think it's about far as it goes. Probably not going to see any standard play. Uh, could be in Commander, I guess. But that's really probably about the extent of it. Not a great card. Moving right along, we have Hallowed Respite. So for a blue and a and a white, you get a exile target non-legendary creature, then return to the battlefield under its own control. If it entered under your control, put a plus one plus one counter on it. Otherwise, tap it. And it has flashback. Um, so this is a great card for you or your opponent. I could see this very easily going into modern. Um, with the Elemental Blink deck. Because uh, they're already running white. They're already running blue. It's five colors. Um, Ephemerate's better than this. But this is multi-purpose to target other people's stuff. So we have to wait and see. Now this obviously is going to be a limited all-star. And I really think this is going to see a lot of play in standard for two mana. Um, it just looks like one of those good cards. And Commander loves this stuff. Good shenanigans. So, Vivisection. So, for a blue and three sorcery, additional cost of the spell, after you sacrifice a creature, and you draw three cards. So, this seems awful. Um, now, at first glance, if you are doing the blue-black thing and you're making decay zombies, and you have that guy that makes a zombie every turn if you don't have a decayed creature, well, you can easily for four mana draw three cards as a sorcery, and that would be fine. I mean, we're used to three mana, draw two, scry two, scry something, draw two... This is just a flat draw three, um, which honestly I don't know if it's better because I'd rather scry than draw an extra card because then you could pick with card selection. But it is what it is. So great and limited. Probably won't see standard play. Um, maybe not even commander play. That's probably about far as it's going to go, just a limited all-star. 
Next here we have Strom Kirk Blood Thief. So for a black and two, you get a two two at the beginning of your end step. If an opponent lost life this turn, you put a plus one plus one counter on target vampire you control. Uh, so this is like a Johnny's Pride mate in reverse. Uh, compared to how hard you smack your opponent. Uh, I think this is a great card. It's going to be great and limited. Uh, getting him in a couple times will easily make him a 4 4 or 5 5. Something's hard to deal with. Um, may see standard play depending on what the vampire deck has in a 3 slot because it's not terrible. Um, maybe in commander, but that's probably about as far as it goes. Next, we're moving right along. Oh, look! Another Phoenix. So the Sunstreak Phoenix is 2 red and 2 for a flying 4 2 creature. Not shabby. Uh, it's neither day or night. It becomes day when it enters the battlefield. Whenever day becomes night or night becomes day, you may pay a red and a colorless. If you do, the phoenix comes to your graveyard to the battlefield tapped. This seems phenomenal. Um, you play this in a gruel deck where it's always day and night because of the werewolves. You play a couple of these, you can always get it out of your graveyard, play it from your hand. Uh, discard it to the graveyard to play it cheaper. Like, you have options. I think this is a great card. It's going to be real good in standard, really good in limited. Uh, might even see some commander play. Um, and there may be a modern deck for this because if you just focus on discarding it to the graveyard and getting it back with a red and one, like, that's your basic Phoenix deck, right? So, I don't know. Seems like a thing to me. I think it's going to be good. Moving on. Next here we have the Obsessed Astronomer. So for red and colors, you get a 2-2. Two -two, pretty good on rate. Uh, it makes it day or night, and whenever day becomes night or night becomes day, you discard up to two cards, then draw that many. Um, this seems really good for red, especially in red ramp, or I'm sorry, red rush. Um, I would run this just because if I get land hosed, I put this I, I put this down and flip it day to night, discard two land, draw two card. Like, this seems really powerful for an uncommon. It could be great and limited. I think it's going to be great in standard. Um, it's got its place in Commander, so, like, this, this could be a thing. Next we have Burn Down the House. Nice. So, for two red and three, you choose one. Burn Down the House deals five damage to each creature and each Planeswalker, so you have a board wipe almost. Or you can create three one-one red devil creature tokens with this creature dies, deal one damage to a target, they gain haste until end of turn. Um, very good multi-purpose removal spell. Great for limited. I think this has a place in the standard uh, just because of the 5 mana, 5 damage to each. And worst case scenario, if there's nothing out there, you just make a bunch of devils and beat them in the face with them. Uh, definitely a commander card by far. Uh, won't see modern play at that 5 mana cost. So, Moving right along, uh, the Meat Hook Massacre. So 2 black and X, interesting. It's an enchantment. When the Meathook Massacre is into the battlefield, each creature gets minus X, minus X in their turn. Whenever a creature you control dies, each opponent loses one life. Whenever a creature an opponent control dies, you gain one life. Very interesting. Because this is an enchantment. It sits on the field. So if you stack this thing for minus three, like they can't cast anything with three toughness or less. I think this is going to be a powerhouse. Great in commander. Good for the limited format. And probably a powerhouse in standard. Maybe even modern, depending on what you're looking to do with it. Because four mana is probably about the upper echelon of modern cards. And for four mana, you get minus two, minus two. It's almost like a little bitty toxic deluge that you never have to pay life for. So this could definitely be a thing, especially against creature decks and things like Burn. Um, you know, they've got a Swiss Spear Goblin Guide, another Goblin Guide, because they play well on turn one. You know, they can get you down to like six life and you've got three creatures you play this for two all their creatures die you gain three life like seems good so yeah i think this is going to be a thing might be a better board wipe because it stays around next we have the cathartic pyre so for red and the colorless you get to choose one three damage to your planeswalker discard up to two cards and draw that many so as an uncommon the option on this is phenomenal uh this is something you want to start in your deck because you can kill something or you can like be more card efficient and with the Phoenix and stuff, this seems phenomenal. Because uh, you still get the whole discard to draw to. Um, but there's no flashback. So it's probably not better than Faithless Looting. Unless you need to do that 3 damage, then the, the option is amazing. So I think this will see standard play, limited play, probably commander play. 
Uh, it may even have a place in modern, uh, depending on what the deck is. So, we'll see. Next, moving right along, we have Memory Deluge. So, for two blue and two, it's an instant look at the top X cards of your library. X is the amount of mana spent to cast the spell. Uh, put two of them into your hand, the rest of the bottom of your library in any, ra any random order. Uh, so, to begin with, you get to look at four, which is fine, but if you can flash it back at seven, that is phenomenal. This is a great draw card. Basically, um, this is like a factor fiction that you control. Like, this seems really good, guys. This is probably one of the best blue draw cards that Standard has seen in a long time. Uh, obviously, it's going to be great in draft and limited, and Commander's going to love this thing. So, I think this thing's going to be easily five. Five ten dollars. This is these are so good. Um, again, clearly this is not going to be played in modern because it costs way too much money, way too much mana. Next here we have Angel Fire, Angel Fire Ignition, and Red White and One. The sorcery put two plus one plus one counters on target creature. It gains vigilance, trample, life leak, indestructible, and haste to end of turn. Whew, that's a word. Um, flashes back for four. I mean, it's probably going to be good in limited, but it's really going to be the only place this is worth a dang. Um, I don't see this good anywhere else, mainly because it's a sorcery. Um, when they can just kill something out from under this, it just seems awful. So, that's the thing about that. Next here, we have Fading Hope. So, for one blue, you can return target creature to its owner's hand. If mana value was three or less, you scry one. It's a typical bounce spell. It's good removal. Great for limited format. Uh, probably won't see standard play. Um, if it said draw, it'd be different, but it says scry, so not good enough, probably. Uh, maybe something for commander if they just want to sift through their deck, so that's probably where that's at. Uh, oh, it's also very good in modern because nothing costs more than two or three. But, moving on, I digress. Uh, the Dreadhound for two black and four. It's a 6-6, six, six, not bad. Uh, enters the battlefield, you mill three cards. Whenever a creature dies or a creature card is put in your graveyard from in your library, each opponent loses a life. Uh, you could easily cast this and bolt somebody. Um, and that may be the next black deck thing, other than, hey, we're going to do a whole bunch of weenie attacks and beat you up. And then on turn six, we're going to lay this thing and let you just lose and bolt you with life loss. Um, and then send my, my uh, little knuckleheads in to die and you lose a life again. So th this seems decent. Uh, six mana and black though so much. Uh, definitely going to be a card in uh, limited. Standard, probably not, but maybe. Uh, easily could be a commander card, I think. I know it's expensive, but it does do all the things. Uh, definitely not a modern card unless you're going to animate it, and I think it's better things to animate. So next here we have the Phantom Carriage. Two blue and four for a 4-4 four, four flyer. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, search your library for a card with flashback or disturb. Put it into your graveyard and shuffle. Um... Seems okay. Six mana is awful high, even though you get to put something in your graveyard and use later. Um, it's a full for a flyer, though, but the only place I really see it's getting played is limited. I think it's too expensive for anything else. Next, we have Florian Valderan Scion. So for black, red, and colorless, you get a 3 3 with first strike. That's already really good. Uh, at the beginning of your post combat, so after, after combat main phase, Look at the top X cards of your library. We X is the total number of life your opponent lost this turn. Exile any number of those cards. Put the rest on the bottom of their library in random order. You may play the exile cards this turn. Wow. Uh, this thing seems really good. Um, I think this is going to be a great card in limited, standard, uh, commander, and maybe even modern, depending on what the deck is built for. Because the whole... Look at the top X card. If they lose three life, like, look at the top three cards. Pick a go and put two on the bottom. Like, come on, guys. I think this is going to be a powerhouse. Next, we have Denik, Pious Apprentice, and Denik, the Pious Apparition. So the Apprentice is a blue and a white for a 2-3. That's really good. Uh, has life link, even better. Cards and graveyards can't be target spells or abilities. That's a nice effect. Um, and it has Disturb. So if you ever do manage to kill this thing, so you can target stuff in the graveyard... Uh, you get a 3-2 flyer where one or more creature cards are put into the graveyard from anywhere you investigate. That is really good. It only triggers once each turn, but that goes for most people. Like, you, your turn, their turn. So you can get a lot of investigate tokens really quick. And once again, if you know if it dies, it gets put in exile, so you can't recast it from the graveyard again. 
I think it's going to be good for limited, great for standard, probably. Um, eh, Commander guys probably get down with this, I think. Um, heck, it may even see some modern play as cheap as it is as a human soldier and what some of its abilities are. So, Next we have the only Commander card. So we have one Commander card released for the Commander sets. It is Linaid, or Lind, Lindy, Cheer for Tormentor. Anyway, so red, black, blue, colorless for a 2 4 with Death Touch, Human Warlock. Uh, not impressed yet. Whenever a curse is put into your graveyard from the battlefield, return it to the battlefield attached to you at the beginning of your next end step. Why would you want that? Uh, at the beginning of your next end step, you may attach a curse attached to you to one of your opponents. If you do, draw two cards. Sweet Mother of Christ. This thing is going to be so sweet with all the curses. Curses. Or as some people like to say, balls. Anyway, uh, I think this is going to be a great card for Commander. Uh, it's a great Commander to be your to be your Commander. It'd be a great part of 100. Um, or the 99, I guess. So, yeah, I'm really impressed with this. And I think this, uh, depending on what else is in this box when they print it, could be really good. So, with that said, we'll go ahead and we'll move on to wrap this up. I appreciate it, guys, as always. Remember to be kind until next time. And stay tuned for this weekend as I give you information and data about upcoming Gen Con, what I'm doing there, and will I be posting, what will I be posting, and what's in store for the eBay store while I'm gone. So, thanks a lot for watching, guys. I do appreciate it, and enjoy your night.